From books full of dark magic spells to books that carry curses and some with instructions on how to summon the devil, readers beware as we enter the world of the top 10 unsettling magic books that invoke evil. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have The Lesser Key of Solomon. This is a grimoire that is said to be cursed. It is said to contain spells that are used for summoning over 72 different demons and just to add a little air of mystery, no one is exactly sure who wrote it. This is because the book is made up of a few different texts that have been compiled from somewhere around the 17th century. This book is said to be so cursed that even just having a copy of it will cause the owner to either experience constant bad luck or have the worst luck of all with passing away. People have shared their terrifying stories with the book and they include the book's pages turning on their own and another person shared that the book violently flew itself across the room at them. How terrifying would that be? While we aren't sure who wrote it, there are rumors or stories that suggest it might have been King Solomon. It is said that perhaps he wrote it for his son and then asked him to bury it with him in his grave. When being prepared for burial, a group of Babylonian philosophers found the book and this is when they were visited by an angel who told them to hide the book from the unworthy. They then placed a spell on the book which was meant to keep it from getting into the wrong hands and that is said to be how the book got its curse. In our number 9 spot today we have the untitled grimoires. A witch's spell book should never be messed with. I feel like that should be obvious, but I'll put that out there because apparently it isn't. The Untitled Grimoires are a set of handwritten spell books that were sold online for $14,000 in 2013. The books were written in the 1960s by a high priestess of Wicca who was the leader of a coven, and they detail things like spells, incantations, enchantments, and instructions on summoning spirits and demons. So, witch stuff. This is all fine and well unless you're sitting here thinking about how you don't believe. If you are a non-believer, it is best to stay as far away as possible from these books. The seller of the books warned that any non-believers who mess with the book will bring upon themselves a deadly curse, and on the first page of the book, the Wiccan herself wrote that proceeding with the book may have serious consequences. It reads, quote, To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further, or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution, and you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. That's a pretty sound warning and one I probably would wouldn't just roll the dice on. You know, just to be safe. In our number 8 spot today we have The Sorrows of Young Werther. We've got a lot of books on this list that are said to contain magic and spells, and this one is a little different from the others on this list because it doesn't. This is a book that came out in 1774, and it is said to have had a large and negative impact on its readers since its release. Apparently after this book came out, a huge wave of its readers ended up taking their own lives because of this strange and dark influence it had on those who read it. Young men would start trying to emulate the main character of the book by dressing like him, acting like him, that sort of thing, before following his horrifying actions in the book. This actually led to the book being banned in some countries, and for the most part, I'm pretty opposed to the banning of books, but I feel like this is one I can probably get behind. It is believed that even people who were in a completely fine headspace prior to reading the book would still be tempted to follow the dark path after reading it, which is exactly what has led people to believe that this book is cursed. In our number 7 spot today, we have The Picatrix. This is a grimoire that is said to contain a large amount of magic that is presumed to be from the 11th century. This text has long been considered pretty obscene because of the graphic content that exists within it. The pages contain some scholarly work with philosophy, astrology, and even some medieval science, which is actually pretty cool. But then there are things like recipes for concoctions that involve mixing human and animal blood, brains, urine, and other bodily fluids in with or other kinds of dangerous substances. The results are said to be magical, but I am far from convinced. This one definitely isn't the darkest or the spookiest on this list today, which is a nice refresher, and while some of what this book contains is definitely historically interesting, I think it's probably best to stay away from the magic and spells that lurk within. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Book of the Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage. This book was of course created by Abramelin, who was indeed a mage, and he created it as a gift for his son. At the time, his son was probably Probably like, um, a book for my birthday? Thanks, I guess. Books are intimidating. Like, no one really liked Holes the first time they read it. Actually, that's a lie. That's still one of the best books I've ever read. But I bet his son was like Harry Potter with the Half-Blood Prince potions textbook, you know? At first you don't really know what to make of it, but that stuff comes in handy later. Anyway, in the early 1900s, this book was translated into English, and that is when the rumors of the book being cursed began to spread. I mean, this book contained spells, but it also contained curses, so I feel like that rumor likely makes a lot of sense. It is said that this rumor has to do with Abramelin's belief that everyone has their own personal 
internal demon. I'm just hoping that mine is cool and nice. The good thing about this book, however, is that it holds instructions on how to get your demon under control through rituals and supernatural situations, but then the kicker with this is that it is always exceptionally risky to reach out to the spirit world, so maybe that's why everyone was feeling like this book is cursed. It's looking like unless you absolutely know what you're doing, the contents of this book just might be too powerful. Those who have had bad experiences with the book explained either bad luck or hauntings from the spirit world are what await for those who dare to read it. In our number five spot today, we have the Book of Black Magic and Pacts. This book, written by A.E. Waite, is an exhaustive guide to all things occult. It looks at lore, magic, occultist history, and ceremonies. There's certainly no issue with this itself, but when in the wrong hands, things can certainly get a little dicey, especially considering this book has been referred to as one of the greatest overviews of occultism, and it includes a large number of magical spells from a variety of sources. This book is said to also contain rituals of transcendental magic and rituals of black magic. The author of this book, A.E. Waite, is said to have been a British scholarly mystic as well as a poet, and it is said that he was quite a prolific writer on both occult and esoteric matters. In our number four spot today, we have the Codex Gigas. This book is said to give the reader the ability to harness evil and negative energy, and is also often referred to as the Devil's Bible. This book was first discovered in 1648 and is massive at 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, and 8.7 inches thick, and here's what's weird. It weighs 165 pounds. It is said that this book was actually written by a monk, but this monk had broken his spiritual vows. He was of course punished, but in a pretty extreme way, which was to be sealed behind a wall and then left there to die. Right before his passing, he realized he wouldn't be able to finish the book, which is when he then summoned Lucifer and asked him to complete it for him. If I knew you could do that, I would have summoned Lucifer to finish all my book reports in school. I guess I probably wouldn't have been cool with the whole selling your soul thing though. It is said that this book is filled with dark rituals, instructions on how to perform exorcisms, as well as a bunch of creepy drawings of the devil and other demons. Right now it is said that this book has 310 pages, but that it once used to have 320. The 10 pages that were ripped out were said to contain instructions on how someone could summon the devil, so hopefully whoever had those 10 pages destroyed them right away. In our number three spot today, we have the Grand Grimoire. This book is often referred to as the book with incredible power and has been called one of the darkest books in the world. While the author of this book is still unknown, the contents of it are things like black magic and dark, spooky secrets. It is believed that the book was written sometime around 1521, and it is split into two books. Book one details instructions on how to summon a demon and how to get the demon to do your bidding. The second book is split into two parts, and it details how to make a pact with a demon and how to command the spirit, but with less tools, which means it is significantly riskier than the instructions in the first book. Apparently in the book it even details how someone can call upon Lucifer or the devil, so I guess who needs those 10 missing pages in the Codex Gigas? Just go out and get the Grand Grimoire and you're right back in the devil summoning game, no worries. The book describes a few different demons and it also gives spells that one can do for things like winning the lottery, love spells, becoming invisible, you know, magic stuff. While those spells certainly sound nice, magic like that always comes at a cost. People fear the Grand Grimoire because they worry that if anyone reads it fully, then the devil will enslave their soul. No thank you. In our number two spot today, we have the Book of Soiga. Anything that is referred to as the Book of Death is definitely one I'll most likely spend some time trying to stay away from. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that is the least inviting thing I've ever heard in my life. If you don't agree with me on that sentiment, however, the tough thing with this one is that nobody knows exactly what language it is written in. The beginning part of the book definitely contains some spells and incantations, the ending of the book really is where the most mystery lies, and trying to decipher it is no easy task. It is said that a scholar named John Dee once attempted to decode the secret book, and it was so difficult that he needed to call on the angel Uriel for help. Even the angel didn't have the answers, and instructed John to call on the archangel Michael, who would be the only one who was able to interpret the text. Here's where this mystery book gets more mysterious, though. After John Dee passed away in 1608, the book basically just vanished, and no one knew where it it went, but then, like magic, it just reappears in the 19th century. Despite this extremely interesting story and how it kind of draws you in like you wish you could crack the code that this book holds, it's best to stay away from because it is said whoever is able to decipher the ending of this book will inevitably die two and a half years later, so is it really worth it? You don't even get a cool phone call to give you a heads up either. No girl coming out of the well, you just get me telling you on the internet 
This is the worst sequel to The Ring ever. In our number one spot today, we have the Munich Manual. Also referred to as the Necromancer's Manual, this grimoire comes to us from the 15th century and is a text that is largely focused on demonology and necromancy. A lot of grimoires have both good and dark magic, but this is one that focuses solely on the dark black magic. There are three different sections to this one. The first section deals with illusionist magic and spells that trick people into seeing things that aren't there. The next is psychological magic, which is meant to use emotions, politics and things like that in order to gain power over another individual. And if these two weren't scary enough, the third section is divinatory spells, which are meant to allow the reader to see into the past, present, or future. One of the most well-known parts of this book is the part that includes instructions on how to make the Mirror of Lilith, which is for the purpose of divination we just talked about. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Uh, maybe don't read any of these books, but I'm not here to tell you what to do, so live your life and... I don't know, be safe. <laughs> I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!